In this video, we're going to demonstrate the automated client failover system that's built in for the .NET applications for both WinForm, WPF, and also programmatic interface for .NET 5, .NET Core applications. Here we see a typical OES configuration. We have a data source connected to a controller that's bringing into the OES system for our tags. That data can then optionally be logged to a database or .NET application. One of the important aspects of a system, of any IoT system, is reliability. So one of the failure points is if any of the data source sensors uh, go into failure, the communications between the controller and the data source uh, is in failure. The controller itself maybe goes offline, uh, or if the OES engine is not able to communicate to the controller. Another point of failure is when the OES engine itself is not available, or if the client application can't communicate to the OES engine. But if we implement a second OES engine with the same tag names in the second OES engine, we can use a simple to use feature that the application can automatically switch to the backup node. Also in the scenario where the data source is not available, do the controller or communications to the uh, sensors, we can have a physical redundant path to direct to the data source as well. The feature I'm going to show you will account for all of these failure scenarios. To demonstrate this, we're going to use Visual Studio to create an application. And this is going to be an operator interface we'll create. Uh, it's going to be something pretty simple. We'll just create some labels. Uh, but we can use buttons, text box. The backup functionality that I mentioned, uh, it also applies to writing to multiple backup servers as well. So when a write occurs from an application, it will write it to both uh, the primary and backup servers. And let's zoom in just a little bit so we can see the, uh, the window a little bit more clear. Very good. Now in the toolbox, we're going to see, we're going to look for an OPC WPF label. And that, these toolboxes, the toolbox should automatically be populated when you install OAS. So I'm going to drag a label onto the form. What we want to do for the content is we want to go into the group content OPC systems and look in the content tag. And what we're going to do is we're going to browse for a tag on my local system. Now this could be from a remote system as well. But keep in mind we're going to demonstrate the hot backup feature to switch to another node. So I'm just going to use a local tag called ramp on this particular label. Uh, let's add one more label in as well. And let's assign this one to the sign value of the uh, primary server. There we go. Now let's just change the uh, font of each of these. There we go. Now when we run the application, let me bring that into view. So there we've got the two numbers, uh, the ramp and the sign signal from the local service. And I'm going to also bring up the configure application for OAS so we can take a look at this ramp signal. And if we just change its data source to something that's, say, invalid, uh, just say to, say, a Modbus driver that doesn't exist, we see the data quality of that point goes to bad. So now what the objective is, is we are going to add a hot backup feature to switch to another node when that data quality goes to bad. So let's exit the uh, debug mode. So when the application is constructed, we'll uh, call a method on the network nodes of the o OPC WPF assembly. So what I'll do is I'll type in mention OAS network nodes. We'll create a local variable called OES network nodes as a OPC WPF dashboard dot OPC WPF OPC network nodes. 
and we'll say it is a new. Uh, so that that will make an instance of it. Uh, then we have the simple method we we'll just call OES dot add backup network nodes. And the first argument, we're going to define what is the primary node. Now, this might be the IP address of your uh, tags that you've defined. In this example, it's all coming from our local host as the primary node. And then the backup is going to be on another remote node. And on our demo server at opcweb.com, we have the same exact tag names. So now, when we run this, So we're running the application, and let me bring back up the configure application again. And let's change that back to an invalid data source for the ramp signal. And we'll see that the ramp signal is still changing. Now, the transition there looked pretty, like, just exactly the same numbers. That's because our simulation itself does some... Uh, values based upon the CPU clock. So the times of the backup node and my local system are pretty much hand in hand. But so let's fix this to a value so that we can really see what's going on. So I'll go ahead and change the value of my local system to one, two, three, and we'll apply those changes. So there we see the local system. Now let's force it to bad quality again. And there we see it's now uh, dynamically changing based upon the value coming from opcweb.com. We go back to good quality, either as a, yeah, we'll just set it back to a value. And there we see that it switched back to the primary node. That's it. This will also account for when the entire uh, engine is not available. So let's do this. Let's actually stop the OES engine locally. And there we see that the, uh, the engine is indeed stopped. And we uh, are still updating values from opcweb.com. And if we start the engine back up online, it will switch back to the uh, local node as well. Of course, our simulation tag is back to uh, a simulation of ramp itself, so that transition, we really didn't see that. Now, at any time, if you wanted to programmatically remove a backup node, you simply call remove backup network node. And what you pass in with this is just one uh, argument, which is the original network node that you assigned in the backup assignment. So that would just be localhost. So in this scenario, we would just be removing the, uh, the backup scenario. Or at any moment you want to switch, change the backup node, just call add backup network node again. Now, if you wanted more information on this feature, you can visit our website at openautomationsoftware.com and go to the knowledge base. And in the knowledge base, we have under the getting started section, we have a redundancy section. And in the redundancy section, we're talking about the client application failover. And there you can see uh, what assemblies are supported with that. We have the OES data assembly, which is to target .NET standard uh, assembly for .NET Core and .NET 5 uh, applications. Uh, also, the programmatic interface uh, for .NET Framework is the OPC Systems Data Connector, and that's for .NET 4 uh, framework applications. The OPC WPF dashboard assembly, which we just demonstrated for WPF, and OPC controls for WinForm applications. If you're interested in other failover scenarios as well, you can look at the entire overview redundancy section, and you can see how you can have server redundancy, uh, driver interface redundancy, uh, then also, of course, a database redundancy with store and forward functionality built in. And uh, also, you can have multiple applications talk to the same server or multiple servers as well. So open automation software accomplishes uh, accounting for failure scenarios in multiple ways. You can choose the one that suits you best. 
If you want to try this for yourself, you can see the download link at the top of the page. And if you have any questions, contact us under our support page under the Contact Us link.